Hello everyone and welcome back to Kobe in History. Today we're bringing back the History News series. I'll try to do this maybe once every week or once every two weeks and I'll try to keep the stories a little shorter as well compared to the news videos that I used to make. So if you're interested in any of the topics I mentioned, I'll also post the links to the articles in the description below so you can check that out if you want more info. I've got four stories for you today, you can see them on screen right now, or if you want to skip to any of them, they should be marked on the progress bar of the video as well. Scientists have identified tiny teeth from a rat-sized creature, which belongs to the oldest known group of primates known as Plesia depiforms. These teeth were found in the Fort Union Formation in northeastern Montana back in the 1980s, but they have now been formally identified and these teeth belong to the earliest known primate that we've discovered so far. Dating back to around 105 to 139,000 years after the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. These early primates represent the life starting to recover after the extinction event, but it's very likely that these creatures evolved from a yet unknown primate ancestor that lived alongside the dinosaurs. The next article is about why we don't seem to find many medium-sized carnivores in the Cretaceous period. Paleontologists have discovered small meat-eating dinosaurs as well as big meat-eating dinosaurs, but there seems to be a lack of medium-sized carnivores during the Cretaceous period. This could just be chance that we just haven't found the medium-sized dinosaurs yet, but this study looks into how the juveniles of the big meat-eating dinosaurs would have filled in the niches that otherwise the medium-sized dinosaurs would have occupied. Dinosaurs were egg-laying animals, so that means that the offspring of the big dinosaurs started out really small compared to how big they could get. So that would mean as these dinosaurs grew up, they likely occupied different niches and ate different foods in their different stages of development. The odd thing was that this gap of medium-sized dinosaurs was most pronounced in the Cretaceous period compared to the Jurassic. So they looked into why this could have been. The Cretaceous period is when the Tyrannosaurs and the Abelisaurs were the dominant predators. And we know that these groups of dinosaurs looked very different as juveniles than they did as adults. And this is unlike the dominant predators in the Jurassic period like Allosaurus, as they didn't change too much in appearance as they grew. We know that Allosaurus hunted giant sauropods in groups, so this probably meant that the adults would share their prey with the juveniles, meaning that the juveniles and adults of the same species occupied the same niche. But at the end of the Jurassic, many sauropods went extinct, and so did Allosaurus. Their niche was then replaced by the likes of Tyrannosaurus. Because a lot of the large sauropods went extinct, adult predators in the Cretaceous might have not had that much left to share with their juveniles. So this would have meant that probably the juveniles would go off on their own and occupy different niches to the adults, so they wouldn't compete with adults of their own species for the same food. This also explained why juveniles would have looked different to their adult forms, as the young would have needed different adaptations to catch their prey. The next story is a short one, it's about Lucy, the oldest and most complete human ancestor that we've discovered, belonging to Australopithecus afarensis. Researchers discovered Lucy's remains in 1974, and it looks like now researchers have given our 3.2 million year old ancestor a new face. They also gave a new face to the 2.8 million year old Australopithecus africanus, known as the Tongue Child who died at the age of three in what is now South Africa. Next we go to some Egyptian art. The 4,600 year old painting known as Medum Gis to be exact, which was discovered in the 1800s. They found that there were three different species depicted in this painting. Two of them relate to the patterns of modern geese. But one didn't line up with any of the geese found in the area today. So this must be a depiction of a now extinct goose species. 
These mysterious geese are most similar to the red-breasted geese, but with a few differences in the patterns on its body and face. No bones from modern red-breasted geese have been found in Egypt, but bones belonging to a yet unidentified bird similar to a red-breasted geese was found in Crete, so this might be the same one. Thanks for watching, let me know what you thought in the comments below and if you want more info about these stories the articles are linked in the description. If you're interested in history please consider subscribing and to finish off I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, especially my $25 patron Parker Dye and my $15 patron G David.